Good morning to one and all. I am Dr. Ramakrishna from Kale University delivering series of lectures on heat transfer. The other day we have finished the conduction part, both steady state and unsteady state. Now we are stepping towards convection. This convection is made into three parts, one is fundamentals and then external flow and internal flow. And afterwards we will take up the natural convection. So let us start with fundamental convection. In this chapter on fundamentals of convection, you will be able to understand at the end of the session, what is the principle involved in convection? how to determine the convective heat transfer coefficient and what is the velocity boundary layer and what is the thermal boundary layer and why we have to consider this boundary layer analysis in convective heat transfer what is frontal number and what is nusselt number and how to develop continuity momentum and energy balance equations. Convection we have seen is the capacity of the fluid to take away heat from a surface due to motion of molecules. So whenever a fluid is flowing over a surface, maybe a plate like this, because of its viscous nature, some particles of the fluid will stick to the plate and they form a stagnant film like this what we have shown here, a black line. The velocity of this stagnant film that formed is equal to zero. The fluid is approaching with a velocity v but on the top of the surface because of the viscosity or viscous nature of the fluid a stagnant film forms. This stagnant film will not allow the next layer to move with the velocity v, therefore it will move with a velocity less than v and little more and little more like that ultimately it reaches the velocity of v. The important consideration here is once a stagnant film of the fluid forms, because there is no molecular motion within this film, convection cannot occur. So the heat from the hot plate into the cold environment first has to pass through this stagnant film and that is probably by the mode conduction. We will come to that part a little later. Just like a stagnant film is formed with zero velocity at the surface, even when the fluid is flowing with high temperature or low temperature, the temperature on the surface of the plate, any particle will attain equal to that of plate temperature. So, a similar kind of phenomena occurs for the temperature also. Therefore, a fluid and a solid surface will have the same temperature at the point of contact and this is known as no temperature jump condition. And similarly, when fluid is flowing with a velocity v, the velocity of the particle on the plate will be always equal to zero that is because of no slip condition which leads to development of a stagnant film. And due to this no slip condition or no temperature jump condition, the heat transfer from the solid plate 
through this stagnant film adjacent to the surface is by pure conduction since the particles in the film are motionless. Hence, you can write an energy balance equation like this. The heat flux through the film by means of conduction in y direction minus k dot t by dou y at y equal to 0 because it is a very thin film which happens at the wall is also equal to the amount of heat flux by means of convection. The capital T represents the temperature distribution in the fluid and dou t by dou y is the temperature gradient at the surface. The heat thus crossed the stagnant film will be carried by the flowing fluid through convection. Hence, you can also write convective heat flux is heat transfer coefficient of the fluid flowing, L represents liquid, the fluid flowing into Ts minus T alpha. Equating these two, you will get H is equal to minus K fluid dou T by dou Y at Y equal to 0 divided by T S minus T alpha. This is the fundamental method to determine the convective heat transfer coefficient in any convection problem. Please remember in the equation Q equal to H A delta T which widely we have used earlier to determine the convective heat transfer from a surface the unknown parameter is H. So to determine that H only, different methods we are adopting in the chapter on convection. So hereafter, our complete effort is how to calculate the value of H in convection. So one fundamental formula which we have obtained by equating the heat transfer through the film by means of conduction equal to the amount of heat carried by the fluid, we got H is equal to minus K dou T by dou at Y equal to 0 by T S minus alpha. Now let us come to the important aspect of the convection that is the boundary layer development. We will discuss both velocity boundary layer formation as well as thermal boundary layer formation when a fluid is flowing over a plate. Consider a flat plate like this over which the fluid is entering with a velocity V, maybe 20 meter per second. So when the fluid enters the plate with 20 meters per second under no slip condition that is due to the viscous nature of the fluid, the particles on the surface of the plate will attain rest and they form a thin stagnant film. We are calling that condition as no slip condition. This film offers resistance for motion of the next immediate layer because of viscous friction and hence the next layer will move but with a velocity slightly more than 0 and less than V. And next layer will move with a velocity more than the first layer, immediate first layer, but with a less velocity than V. So while we are progressing in the Y direction, as shown in this, the velocity of the particle gradually increases. Please note that there exists always a relative velocity between 
any two adjacent layers because of viscosity of the fluid. So due to the flow of fluid over the surface, the particles that are flowing on this plate will attain rest at the plate and slowly their velocity goes on improving in the y direction. At a distance, some distance in the y direction, the velocity of the fluid particle will be approximately 99.99 percent .99 of u alpha. As I said, never two layers will have the same velocity because of viscous action. But in the y direction as we proceed, the velocity goes on increases. The point where the velocity is approximately 99.99 percent of free stream velocity is known as the boundary point. If you consider the leading edge of the plate, the film, the stagnant film that offers resistance is less. So therefore, in a small height itself, the velocity of the fluid will attain approximately free stream velocity. Whereas, we proceed along the length of the plate, the resistance layer increases, thereby it takes more height to reach a free stream velocity u alpha. So if we mark all those points along the length of the plate where the velocity is approximately equal to u alpha and join them, you will get a fictitious line called boundary layer. So boundary layer is that which joins all the points where the velocity is approximately equal to 0.99 times u alpha and the thickness of this boundary layer as we proceed along the length of the plate goes on increases. And another important aspect is at the beginning of the plate while the fluid particles enter all the particles move like soldiers one behind the other so that the entire fluid flow can be divided as laminas, layer like layer segregation you can do it. That region where the fluid particles move in laminas in a line one behind the other is known as lamina region. And the boundary that is developed within this laminar region is known as laminar boundary layer. As they move along the length of the plate after certain distance, they gain momentum and then start distracting themselves from their own path. The path of one particle will be interrupted by another particle. So the particle starts moving in a chaotic manner and after traveling certain distance they start moving in an irregular fashion. All the particles will move in forward direction only, but they don't move in a line. That region where the molecules are not following a definite path and their motion is irregular 
and their path lines are intercepted one by the other is known as turbulent region and that boundary layer is called turbulent boundary layer. The region in between laminar and turbulent is called transition region where the flow turns from laminar to turbulent. Another important and interesting thing you have to observe in this is because the velocity of the film next to the plate is zero, the immediate next layer due to the high viscous action of this can only move with a velocity slightly more than zero. You can observe here, very less and this is the velocity profile and that velocity slightly greater than zero is not sufficient for the molecules to distract from their own path. Therefore, even in the turbulent boundary layer near to this wall or surface the particles move like soldiers only. That region within the turbulent boundary layer where the particles move in a line is known as buffer layer. So this buffer layer contains a laminar flow of fluids. So if you look at this red line, this red line is nothing but our boundary layer. The velocity at this arrow point is nothing but 99.9 percent .9 of u all. Similarly the velocity here 99.9 .9 percent of u all. The velocity here 99.9% .9 of u alpha. The velocity here 99.9% .9 of u alpha. And what is the velocity here? u alpha. And any point here? u alpha. That means above this red line, though the fluid is having viscosity, the effect is not visible. Uniform velocity is prevailing above the turbulent, I mean above the boundary layer. That region where the viscosity is not playing any role is known as invisible flow region. And within the boundary layer, the velocity varies from u alpha approximately on the boundary layer to zero. So that u alpha to zero the profile is shown like this. If you look at the velocity profile that is drawn in the laminar region, it is more or less like a parabolic profile. Whereas in the turbulent region, up to buffer layer it is a parabolic and then in the turbulent one, blunt in shape and then it continues. So the velocity profile changes in the laminar region as well as in the turbulent region. As molecules are thoroughly mixed up in the turbulent region, obviously the rate of heat transfer is high in case of turbulent motion when compared to laminar motion. For example, if I want to cool the coffee at a faster rate, I will stir well with the help of a spoon. So that stirring of coffee with the spoon creates a turbulence. So molecules mixes thoroughly and thereby they convect more amount of heat to the surrounding fluid. So this is the zone where you have high rate of heat transfer. The height 
in vertical direction from the plate surface to the boundary layer is known as boundary layer thickness delta. The point where the flow turns from laminar to turbulent is known as critical distance. So it is further clarity. Further for further clarity it is shown like this. Over the surface, this is the velocity profile. The point where the velocity reaches 99% of velocity is called the boundary layer thickness. And up to this boundary layer thickness, the region is called boundary layer region. And above the boundary layer region, the region is called inviscid flow region. And the zero velocity at the surface is called no slip condition. So this is about the development of velocity boundary layer. What is the necessity of considering this velocity boundary layer? Because the heat from this plate to the fluid first has to pass through this boundary then only it will be picked up by the surrounding fluid. So the analysis of boundary layer is very important to understand how the molecules are capable of dissipating heat from the surface into the environment. And in case of external flow, the critical Reynolds number is 5 into 10 power 5. So here it is worthy to mention the Reynolds number concept. You might have studied in the prerequisite course fluid mechanics. Reynolds number is defined as the ratio of inertia of forces to viscous forces and this Reynolds number decides whether the flow is laminar or turbulent. And the critical Reynolds number for external flow is 5 into 10 power 5. For example, at this point where the flow turns from laminar to turbulent, the Reynolds number value at this point is 5 into 10 power 5. That length corresponding to it, 5 into 10 power 5 is called critical distance. And the Reynolds number here is called critical Reynolds number. So if the Reynolds number is less than 5 into 10 power 5, the flow is laminar. And if it is greater than 5 into 10 power 5, it is turbulent. Please remember this critical Reynolds number 5 into 10 power 5 is only for external flow. And for internal flow, the critical Reynolds number is 2300, roughly. We'll come to that a little later. And now the thickness of the boundary layer, what we have seen earlier in the figure, the point in y direction where the velocity approximately reaches the 99.9% .9 of free stream velocity is called the boundary layer thickness velocity boundary layer thickness or hydrodynamic boundary layer thickness is approximately equal to 5x by root rex. This is derived by using momentum integral approach. You might have studied in the fluid mechanics Blasius solution 4.94x by root rex simplified as 5x by root Rex. And in case of turbulent flow, the thermal boundary, sorry, the velocity boundary layer or hydrodynamic boundary layer thickness is given by 0.381x by Rex to the power 0.2. So this is how you can determine the thickness of the boundary layer at any distance 
x from the leading edge of the plate. You calculate the Reynolds number at a distance x by using Re equal to V x by nu kinematic viscosity and then using these formulas you can determine the thickness of the boundary layer. Just like velocity boundary layer formation on a plate when fluid is flowing, it can also develop a thermal boundary layer. Suppose the fluid is entering the plate with a free stream temperature T alpha and the plate surface is maintained at Ts may be Ts greater than T alpha, 200 degrees centigrade, where T alpha is 20 degrees centigrade. The particles that attach to the surface will attain a temperature equal to Ts, 200. So as we move in the vertical direction, next layer to next layer, the temperature decreases gradually from 200 to 20. The point where the temperature of the air particles or the fluid particle approximately equal to 99.9% .9 of free stream temperature is known as a thermal boundary point. So if you join all those points over the plate along its length, you will develop a thermal boundary layer. So the temperature on the surface of the plate is a Ts. As we proceed in the y direction, the temperature varies and at this point the temperature will become approximately equal to free stream temperature and that height is called thermal boundary layer thickness. If you consider Ts is say 0 degrees and T alpha is some 40 degrees, particles on the surface will be at 0 degrees centigrade. Next layer will be at 1 degree and another layer will be at 2 degrees, next layer will be at 3. So slowly as we move in the y direction, the temperature will be equal to that of 40. That you can observe here, the thermal boundary layer development and the temperature profile. Considering Ts as 0, how the temperature is varying from 0 to T infinity, you can visualize here. And this red line is called thermal boundary layer and this is the thickness of the thermal boundary layer. So when fluid is flowing over the plate, at the stagnant film, the temperature of the fluid particle is a Ts and at the boundary, the particle here is T infinity and there is a variation of temperature from Ts to T infinity heat has to first pass through this film, then only it can enter into the surrounding fluid. Therefore, the analysis of thermal boundary layer and how the temperature is varying within this uh, thermal boundary layer is important to determine the rate of heat transfer from the surface into the free stream. The thickness of the thermal boundary layer at any location along the surface is defined as the distance from the surface at which the temperature is equal to 0.999 T alpha or the difference in T minus T s, T is the temperature at any point is approximately equal to 0.99 times T alpha minus T s. This is the definition. In simple words, 
it is the point where the temperature is approximately equal to T alpha. So like in velocity boundary layer, as we move along the length of the plate, the thickness of the thermal boundary layer also increases. The shape of the temperature profile in the thermal boundary layer dictates the convective heat transfer between solid surface and the fluid flowing over it. It is because we have seen H is equal to, in the earlier definition, H is equal to minus K dou T by dou Y at Y equal to 0. This dou T by dou Y at Y equal to 0 is nothing but temperature gradient at y equal to 0. So to determine the temperature gradient at the wall, first of all you should know how the temperature is varying near the wall. That is nothing but by knowing the temperature distribution within the boundary. So therefore, the shape of the temperature profile in the thermal boundary layer dictates dou T by dou Y at Y equal to 0 and hence the convective heat transfer coefficient. In flow over a heated or cooled surface, both Vela and thermal boundary layers will develop simultaneously. You will have velocity variation in the Y direction and you will also have temperature variation in the y direction. And as we move in the y direction, at one particular point, the variation ceases and velocity and temperature remains constant. Those points are marked as boundary layer points. The fluid velocity will have a strong influence on the temperature profile and hence the development of velocity boundary layer relative to the thermal boundary layer will have a strong effect on the convective heat transfer. This is the very important point which indicates the necessity of boundary layer analysis to assess convective heat transfer coefficient. Now, as we have seen, while the fluid particles are moving in the boundary, they are subjected to both viscous forces as well as inertia forces. Hence, it leads to the development of a boundary. And within the boundary, the heat has to pass from the surface of the plate to the surrounding fluid. Hence, the molecules or the fluid must possess the capacity to diffuse the heat from the plate surface into the surrounding medium. And at the same time, the momentum also should be diffused. That means the molecules should move faster within the boundary so as to spread the energy at a faster rate. So there are two aspects. One is momentum diffusion and another one is heat diffusion. The ratio of momentum diffusivity <coughs> to that of thermal diffusivity is defined as Prontal number nu by alpha where alpha is K by rho Cp Hence, that rho joins with mu and becomes mu. Mu Cp by K or mu by alpha is the definition of frontal number. And the significance of this frontal number 
as it indicates, it decides the relative thickness of velocity boundary layer and thermal boundary layer. The thickness of the thermal boundary layer greatly depends on diffusivity of heat energy, whereas the thickness of the velocity boundary layer depends on molecular motion and their momentum diffusivity. So therefore, the relative thickness of velocity and thermal boundary layers is described by the dimensionless parameter frontal number which is defined as momentum diffusivity to thermal diffusivity. So delta by delta T, the ratio of hydrodynamic boundary layer thickness to thermal boundary layer thickness is roughly equal to frontal number to the power n, where n is a positive exponent. If frontal number is 1, then delta is equal to delta T. Mostly for gases, the frontal number is approximately 1 and hence both momentum and heat dissipates to the fluid at the same rate. If frontal number is less than 1, the ratio becomes less than 1 and hence delta becomes less than delta T. So heat diffuses very quickly in liquid metals, that is when frontal number is less than 1. If frontal number is greater than 1, delta becomes greater than delta T. That means heat diffuses slowly, whereas momentum diffusivity will be more. So hydrodynamic boundary layer thickness is greater than thermal boundary layer thickness, which happens in fluids having frontal number greater than 1, that is in oils. Therefore, thermal boundary layer is much thicker for liquid metals and much thinner for oils relative to the velocity boundary layer. And we can show later that the ratio of hydrodynamic boundary layer to thermal boundary layer thickness is a frontal number to the power 1 by 3 for laminar flow and both are equal for turbulent flow. Why boundary layer thickness and thermal boundary layer thickness are similar in turbulent flow? The turbulent flow is there, is that where the molecules are mixed thoroughly. So they are crossing their paths, they are entering into the path of another particle, they are moving in a chaotic manner, therefore in the process of their motion they carry the energy and uh, heat diffusing capacity of the molecules as well as momentum diffusing capacity of the molecules mix up and both are approximately same. Therefore, in the turbulent region, thermal boundary layer thickness and hydrodynamic boundary layer thickness are same. Now, as we have seen, the heat has to flow from the plate surface into the environment, first through the stagnant film and that stagnant film allows heat only by means of conduction as there is no relative motion of molecules. The heat which crosses that stagnant film by means of conduction will be picked up by the surrounding molecules due to their motion and that mode is called convection. So with reference to the conducting capacity of the fluid and the convective capacity of the fluid, another non-dimensional number is involved which is called Nusselt number and hence Nusselt number is defined as the ratio of heat flux 
by means of convection to that of heat flux by conduction when the fluid is assumed to be motionless, no slip condition. The formula for heat flux by means of convection is H delta T and that of conduction is K delta T by thickness. So delta T cancels, you will get H L by K, where L is the dimension in meters, H into thickness by K, Nusselt number H L by K. Listen here, the conduction heat flux is nothing but representing the conducting capacity of the fluid which formed a thin stagnant layer on the surface of the plate. So this K delta T by L is the conduction heat transfer through the fluid film where the K represents the thermal conductivity of the fluid. So Nusselt number is equal to HL by K where H is the convective transfer coefficient L is the dimension or thickness and K is the thermal conductivity of the fluid. Earlier in transient conduction we introduced one more non-dimensional number called Biot number, the formula of which is also HL by K. But there in Biot number it is the ratio of internal resistance to external resistance. That internal resistance offered for conduction is by the solid, not the surrounding fluid. So therefore, in Biot number, the K represents thermal conductivity of the solid, whereas in Nusselt number, K represents the thermal conductivity of the surrounding fluid. So it's a very important uh, question, concept question. Distinguish between Nusselt number and Biot number. Though the formula looks same, the concept is entirely different. So hence Nusselt number is representing the heat that is passing through the fluid by means of convection to that of the ability of the fluid to conduct the heat. So this H we have defined minus K dot T by dou at Y equal to 0 by T S minus T alpha. That is by equating the heat transfer through this layer by means of conduction equal to convection. We obtained this formula earlier. And now introduce the non-dimensional terms for the T and Y. The T can be written as T star to T alpha minus T S by T S minus T alpha. And Y is written as Y star L. Y is equal to Y star L or Y by or Y star is Y by L. So therefore, this H equals to minus K T alpha minus T C T S dou T star by L. L is when you are replacing Y with Y star, you will get this L, etc. So this cancels and you will get K by L dou T star by dou Y star. Take this L K to the left hand side, you will get H L by K, nothing but Nusselt number equal to dou T star by dou Y star. This is dimensionless temperature gradient. T star dimensionless temperature, Y star dimensionless distance. So if you express the temperature gradient at the wall in a dimensionless form, that becomes the Nusselt number. So the Nusselt number is equivalent to the dimensionless 
temperature gradient at the surface and thus it is a property referred to as dimensionless heat transfer coefficient. And if you look at this, the local Nusselt number in case of external convection depends on or any forced convection the extra star value, Reynolds number and frontal number. When you consider average Nusselt number it doesn't depend on X because you are taking average over the entire length. It is a function of Reynolds number and frontal number. So in general in any forced convection problem we will prove later that Nusselt number is expressed in the form of C R e to the power m and P r to the power in. So in the convection, particularly in forced convection, the non-dimensionless numbers involved are Nusselt number, Reynolds number and frontal number.